نحمده ونسلي ونسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسوله النبي الأمين المكين الحنين الكريم الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I welcome you to another episode of the greatest Sufis Before I disclose to you which Sufi inshallah al-aziz we have chosen for today's episode on whose life and whose teachings we will inshallah al-aziz discuss and whose episode will be shown to you inshallah al-aziz also I would like to again emphasize on why do we need to study the life and the teachings of these Ahlullah, these friends of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I have given in my previous episodes some reasons uh, however today I am mentioning another reason another suburb ke ahlullah ke saath kyon mohabbat ki zarurat hai unki zindagi unki taalimat par guftugu karne ki hame kya zarurat hai ke hum awliyae karam ho sufiyae azam ho unki zindagi unki ahwal unki aqwal aur unki raat din allah ki bargah mein kis tarah wo ibadat kiya karte the khauf e ilahi ke saath isko اس کے مطالعہ کی اور اس سے عام کرنے کی اس کی اہمیت کیا ہے the reason is because almighty Allah سبحانہ وتعالی has in surah al-kahf mentioned وَسْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعِشِي almighty Allah in the surah kahf has narrated the story of ashab-e kahf some the people of cave the friends of almighty Allah who remained in a cave and for a couple of centuries they remained there they slept there but physically their bodies did not disintegrate and did not die they were still alive for three centuries almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty Allah changed the direction of the sun for his friends ahlullah almighty Allah in the surah al-kahf narrates the story of his friends of his ahlullah among with his friends of all with his friends these ashab -e kahf there was also a dog and almighty allah has even narrated in the holy quran in surah al-kahf that this dog used to accompany these ahlullah used to stay with them for three centuries and almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken has revealed verses on how this dog used to sleep for this, these three centuries and then the Mufassireen, the Ahlullah, the Urafa, they say that that dog is a dog which will also enter Jannah which will enter heaven because of its close companionship with Ahlullah, with the friends of Allah, with the Sufis, with the saints this dog, that dog is known as Qatmir Almighty Allah then in the same surah mentioned mentions Vasbir Nafsaka that you also whoever is reciting reading the Quran and you want to be close to Almighty Allah you also want to obey Almighty Allah you want to become a friend of Almighty Allah you be want to become a worshipper of Almighty Allah you want to become an abid of Almighty Allah what should you do Vasbir Nafsaka ma'alladheena yad'oon rabbahum bil ghadati wal ishi Attach yourself, sit down in the company of those who always remember their Lord. And in the Ahlullah, the Sufis, the saints, sit down in their company, sit down in their Sohbah. Because their Sohbah is such that even when a dog attaches himself to the Ahlullah, it will get reward. Then what reward will there be for those who are humans? Those who are Ummatis, followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what reward has Allah written for them? It is unimaginable. So Almighty Allah then mentions also in the same surah the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam who searched for a Sufi of his time, who searched for a saint and then fawajada abdam min ibadina and then after searching for him, for a saint, for a Sufi, found that Sufi and he accompanied that Sufi for some time. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this in the Holy Quran that to talk about the Sufis is the Sunnah of Allah. 
to talk about the Sufis, to mention how they, how they sleep, how they talk, what, how they spend their lives. It is a sunnah of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And then also remember my dear viewers, that when this mentioning and narrating the life and the teachings of these Ahlullah, the Sufis, is a sunnah of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, then what will be the reward of his sunnah? When the reward of a sunnah fulfilling a practice of the Prophet wasallam is so much that there is a hadith which says you, uh, there will be a time in which a person will fulfill one of my sunnah, revive one of my sunnah, and he will get the reward of 70 shuhada, 70 martyrs. Then the question is, what is the reward for those who revive this sunnah of Allah, which nowadays, unfortunately, nowadays it, has, it is not so much common, this sunnah of Allah is revived through Ummah channel again. What is the sunnah? The sunnah is of Allah himself to talk about the life and the teachings of his friends, of his Sufis, of his saints. This is why we talk about the Sufis. This is why we are reviving the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu in which he mentions muttafaq alay hadith. This is a muttafaq alay hadith. This is a hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari as well as in Sahih al-Muslim. مَثَلُ الْجَلِيسِ الصَّالِحِ وَالسُّوءِ كَحَامِلِ الْمِسْكِ وَنَافِخِ الْكِيرِ فَحَامِلُ الْمِسْكِ إِمَّا أَنْ يُؤْخِذِ خِزْيَكَ وَإِمَّا أَنْ تَبْتَعَ مِنْهُ وَإِمَّا أَنْ تَجِدَ مِنْهُ رِيحًا طَيِّبَةً The Holy Prophet وسلم, said that the person who is a good person, his example is like the person who is, who is a person of fragrance, who has fragrance, who owns a shop of fragrance, you can either buy from him the fragrance, or even if you do not buy the fragrance from him, then at least by going and sitting in his company, you will get some fragrance on you. You will get some smell with you. And the person, the Holy Prophet said, imma an yuhrika thiyabaka wa imma an tajida rihan khasiyata. The person who is evil, on one hand we have the awliya Allah, the friends of Allah. On the other hand we have the awliya shaitan, the friends of shaitan, the enemies of Allah. If you sit with them, what will happen is that you will get their, the, the, the small bad smell from them. By sitting in their company, you will get the small, the bad smell, bad odor from them. And sitting in the company and talking about the life and the teachings of the Sufis will give you, if you do not buy this fragrance, what is this fragrance? The Prophet ﷺ gave an example, the fragrance is love for Allah. It means khawf for Allah. It means loving Allah. It means having passion for Allah. It means prolonging for Almighty Allah's qurba, for his sohba. For to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and to be able to see Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have this desire, this is that fragrance. To become God-fearing, this is that fragrance. To become a person of taqwa, this means that fragrance. The Prophet ﷺ was talking about fragrance, but he meant this. He meant these qualities, these attributes, these good deeds. These good deeds can only be gained through studying the lives and the teachings and then practicing upon them of the great Sufis. So my dear viewers, today inshallah al-Aziz, and in the next episode also, the following episode as well as today's episode, we will be talking about a great Sufi, a great saint, whose name is Shaykh al-Islam, a Shaykh Bahauddin Zakaria, a Suharwardi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. This great Sufi, great scholar, great saint, was from the subcontinent. He initiated the Suharwardi order, the Suharwardi tariqa in the subcontinent. He was a disciple of the great Sufi Sheikh, a Sheikh Shahabuddin Umar Suharwardi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. A Sheikh Bahauddin Zakaria rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi was that great scholar, great Sufi who established educational institutes at his time, who sent missionaries to other countries, Indonesia, China, Malaysia, Philippines, to other countries from the subcontinent to spread the message and propagate the message of true Islam, the message of Sufism, the message of the true 
understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. This great Sufi, great Sheikh, a Sheikh Bahauddin Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali was born on the 27th of Ramadan in, the, in 578th Hijri, which corresponds with either 1182 or the year 1183. He was born in Kot Kahor, in, this, in a city, in a, in a village, Kot Karor near Multan. His father was Hazrat Ash Sheikh Kamaluddin Ali Shah Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. A Sheikh Bahauddin Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali was a descendant of the, he was a descendant of great ulama, great pious shuyukh. In fact, he was a descendant of a sahabi, of a companion of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam, Hazrat Bahauddin Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ali. The famous mu'arrikh, famous mu'arrikh historian, Sayyid Sultan Nadvi has narrated, has, has mentioned and written this. That Hazrat Bahauddin Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali's forefathers, they came in the second century, in the second Islamic century, and they came with the army of Muhammad bin Qasim towards Sindh, and there they settled in Sindh. And in fact, he has written that the forefathers of As Sheikh Bahauddin Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali were Sahaba companions. And one Sahabi, particular Sahabi of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Hazrat Ash-Shaykh, Hazrat Hubar bin Asad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, or Hubar bin Asad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he who was a very rich Sahabi, who was a very uh, rich Sahabi at the time of the time of Holy Prophet Sallallahu and who in initially opposed the message of Islam, but later accepted the message of Islam after the conquest of Makkah. Sheikh Bahauddin Zakaria rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, belongs from his descendants and he was a Qureshi from his Nasab. A Sheikh Bahauddin Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali received his initial early education from his father, a Sheikh Kamaluddin Ali Shah Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. When he was seven, he was, he became a Hafiz of the Holy Quran and he also studied under Maulana Nasiruddin Balakhi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. Hazrat Sheikh Bahauddin Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ali was a Sufi on the Wahhab Tariq, on the Wahhab method, which means that he was already born as a Sufi. He was already born as a saint of Allah. He was already born as a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was reflected, this was disclosed through some beautiful events in his childhood, in his, in his childhood. What were these events? First of all, his father Sayyid Kamaluddin Ali Shah, he says, my son, when he was a toddler and before that, when he was a baby, he was born in the 27th of Ramadan. The next two days before Eid, he did not drink milk during the time of fasting. During the time of fasting, the duration of fasting, he, did, he abstained from drinking milk from his mother. So we realized by that, that this child is a special blessing of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then also, he says, when I used to recite the Quran and he was small, he would normally, when he was crying, and while he was crying, I would recite the Quran, he would at the same spot become silent. And he, it, it looked like he was listening and doing sema and doing, uh, listening to the recitation of the Holy Quran. My dear viewers, this happened in the early days of Hazrat Shaykh Bahauddin Zakaria Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, which disclosed the fact that he was a waliullah on the tariq of tariq of Wahab. He was born as a waliullah, as a friend of Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The viewers, we are going to a break inshallah. After the break, we will continue our discourse.